personal belongings are your personal responsibility. Monitor your luggage at all times. Hello everyone, welcome. My name is Adam J. Pestridge and uh, today we're going to take a look at the carrot. So the carrot is a self-sufficient exploration vessel uh, with extended fuel tanks for a long duration flight. Uh, it even houses a Pisces class scout ship and is able to launch from the ship hangar, also including an Ursa rover and unmanned explorer drone pods. It has canopy protection, a fully working bridge, uh, separate modules. The Anvil Carrick is a multi-crew explorer that has more than earned its long-standing status as the go-to pathfinder for both military and civilian services. The Carrick comes with two additional crafts as stated, the rover and the Pisces. It is built as a single self-sustaining ship that can make long duration voyages through the roughest areas of space. It's designed specifically for transmitting jump points, dealing with extreme conditions in space and getting back home. Since its time in the UEE Navy, it has been the vanguard of every UEE exploration effort in recent years. Combined with the high tensile hull armor, the Carrick is one of the safest exploration ships in the galaxy. The Carrick is now declassified and is available for civilian use. Crewing four to six people, it is classed as a large and holding 456 SCU in cargo capacity. It has a 15 minute claim time with a 10 minute expedited time with an expedited fee of 2,135 UEC credits. Standalone will cost $600 and it has a time limited sail attached to it. Its length is 126.5 meters, beam 76.5 and combat speed 208 milliseconds. The Carrick is a starship from Star Citizen and it is huge. So uh, let's go on board and check it out. It's a multi-crew ship designed for a crew of up to six people, I believe. And yet it can actually hold a lot more people inside. It's, uh, it's got room for vehicles. It's even got room for another spaceship. Let's check it out. So here we have the cargo area, and uh, the cargo area is easily controlled by this panel here, where you just close the door, and that is it. And this can literally fill uh, a, a rover in. Or it can fit um, almost like a tank in there as well. And uh, there's a guardrail button here by pressing that by pressing that and the ramp is raised to avoid uh, any damage to the ship itself this is uh, just one area of the Carrick and it is massive now there's a door through here um, and if we go through it's just a small utility room but an interesting feature is this stair ladder here which we won't go up but it does run the entire height of the ship. So in case the lifts are broken, if there's no power, um, which I definitely got running, um, then you can use that lift there. And uh, through here, we have uh, an elevator and two, uh, and a docking collar. Now, this isn't in use at the moment. The door can open and through here is the docking ring. But um, the doors can be opened, but there's nothing that yet can dock to it. But when uh, the docking feature does come in, in the future, other ships that do also share a docking collar can also uh, dock to this ship. And uh, this is how they would come on board, just through this little ring area there.
just like the International Space Station, which is pretty cool. And uh, there's areas here for your spacesuits. So if you've got your friends around and they they don't want to hang in their uh, spacesuits the entire time and everything's sealed up, then they can put their clothes in here and then walk around freely without the need of their spacesuits. So we are going to come through here now where we have one of three cargo bays. Now these cargo bays, again, are massive. Um, if we even call the elevator to go down and see how big they are. So if you have the Carrick and you're using it for cargo, this is one of the areas you're going to be able to put in. And look at the height of the ceiling in here. It's massive. You're going to be able to put loads of cargo in here. Um, absolutely loads, you know. So, and that's one of three. I won't go into all three of them, but uh, you get the idea. It's massive. Here's the second one. And... Uh, through here is the third one. Absolutely huge. So, continuing through here, we come to what looks like some sort of uh, central reception area. And again, this is an area for people to store their suits. As you can see, there are six here. And I believe there was four or five other ones in that other room, which so far, that's like 11 people can, you know, happily uh, sort of come aboard this ship and, and utilize its features. Um, we have a weapons locker here where you store all your uh, all your weapons. And just through here is one of two turrets guns. Um, this is one of the main ones, which if we climb in... And I believe that there is another one on the other side as well. So... And it's uh, it's ready to go. So there it is that. So if you and your friends uh, all have specific roles, then the guns area is uh, one cool feature uh, for a reason of having this giant ship. And here there is another weapons storage. And we're back in here. So, the, we will go up through the elevator, uh, through down there. I just want to continue through here. Oh, in fact, this is one of the elevators. Let's uh, call it as you would a normal elevator. Some of these doors in this ship, uh, you can literally just walk up to and they will automatically open. Some of them, uh, you kind of need to call, call the elevator. So right now, we're on the sub deck. We're at the bottom deck. Um, I do believe, actually, it does go down lower than this. Um, so, we're going to go to the habitation deck, though. We will go down to the lower as well. So, this is the habitation deck, and as you can hear, it's pretty loud in here. Let's just quickly run through. So, just through here is the medical bay. And one of the coolest features of this ship is the medical unit. For instance, if we come through here, we can see we have an ICU unit and uh, two medical beds for the uh, sick patients. In here is the doctor's office, which has no ability to unlock the door from the inside. Don't get trapped in there. Make sure your mates are on board. And this one is a sort of assistant doctor storage room. But in here, I think we have to uh, get open it ourselves. On this panel here, apart from, obviously, the ICU bed, that if you die, you can actually create a respawn point here, which I've just done now. So if I die, I will end up on this bed. So this is a great feature if uh, you get hijacked by somebody. You know, somebody stows on your ship and um, decides to uh, nuke you while you're flying. Um, you will actually respawn back on your own ship. 
okay? And uh, you can then go after them and reclaim your ship back, and they won't have expected it. Unless, of course, they know about this feature, so... Which would be a bit silly to hijack somebody with a Karak ship, to be honest, because chances are that they have enabled this particular feature and you'd be dead anyway. So, there is much more to explore within this room here, um, but it's more concerning to doctors and medical staff, which I am not. So we will just continue with the tour. So as part of the uh, the ship series, I do plan on going through every ship that I have available to me, um, letting everybody see what uh, it looks like inside. And this isn't really a review of it, this is just a tour of the ship, I guess. As here's what rooms there are. And this room is one of my favorite rooms. Now, I love this room, okay? All it is is the dining room table. I mean, it's got like what looks like microwaves here. It's got uh, some didgeridoo little thingy there. Um, ship's quite loud. Um, I did leave the engines, uh, the power on, sorry, without the engines on, just so we could have lights and everything in here. But uh, look at this. What does this remind you of, eh? Now, it is a big shame that the uh, chairs you cannot sit down on. Right? I find that a huge oversight. I mean, imagine if you and your friends are in this room, sat at this table like this, discussing plans, you know, where should we go next, what should we do, having a proper, like, board meeting, as it were, you know, and then suddenly somebody, you know, something bursts out one of their chests. I mean, you could literally recreate the alien scene right here in this room. You know, this is one of my favorite rooms. This is a complete nod to the film Alien, and I love it. I absolutely love it. Um, and there's loads of little details on the on the table here, a little camera, chocolate bar. Um, and I do hope they make that these seats can be sat down on because this room is absolutely cool. Now, I hear you ask, well, what do we do after a hard day's work? Where do we go? Well, they've got you covered there as well. If you do fancy relaxing, you know, you can come for a game of pool if you want. Um, Again, a little bit, I don't know if this will be in the final product or not, but you can't actually play pool here yet. Um, it's literally just for show. Which is kind of silly because it seems like an awful waste of space, if that is true. So I do hope that they plan to make this a playable room of pool. Because how cool would it be that where you're en route somewhere and suddenly you get to play pool, you know? How cool would that be? How cool would it be if you have the option of having a faster quantum drive, so therefore if you just want to get there really fast you can, or it can take you like 20, 30 minutes to get somewhere and then you can just hang out in here for that time and talking with your friends. That would be so cool. I really hope that they uh, make that a feature. And of course, obviously every games room needs a toilet and this one has one in here, which is pretty cool. It's a very big walk-in, complete with vampire mirror, and uh, I'm guessing that this is the actual toilet itself. Yep, there we go. Two toilets there for the one pool room. Pretty cool. And then there's a room on the other side, which I don't believe opens. Oh, yes, the bedroom. Oh, yes, here is the bedroom for your staff, for your crew. There are five beds in here, I believe. That's not a bed up there, that's ammunition access. So this is a five bedroomed uh, little pad here, um, complete with a seat. And then of course the captain, I guess, yes, he would, um, he's got his own bedroom all by himself. Oh, poor chap. He's got no one to talk to, whereas the staff, they've got everybody to talk to. And again, I think these are the showers. Yes, that's the shower in there, so you can come in here, tra la 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 turn on the hot water. I do believe that they uh, do plan for like the showers to actually be used um, as, a, as a way of regenerating health. I'm not too sure, but that would be cool if that's what you have to do if you wanted to regenerate your health whilst on the ship, is actually have a shower. Go through the hassle of removing your armor, removing your clothes, getting into the shower, and spending like a couple of minutes in there, and then getting a full whack of health. That would be pretty cool. Um, and a great way to replenish your um, 
your health. So, moving on. We got the bridge up ahead and we've got a door here which leads into the captain's quarters. This is the captain's room here. He has his own little private office here um, and a chair which we can actually sit down on. Which doesn't seem to move forward, which I would hope it does, but for this purpose it doesn't. And it's got its own Star trek -y computer station and uh, it's got a lot of monitors in here. It's got like four monitors. Uh, for one dude and uh, oh hello we've got this picture here what's that a picture of New York City look at that looking a bit, a bit different now I wonder if that's a little easter egg for when they actually get to uh, creating the Sol universe I wonder if that's actually concept work for what New York will look like in the year what is it 2290 or something like that I think that'd be pretty cool and there's other pictures here we've got Terra that's uh, another I think that's a planet um, well, he, he reads a lot of, but he's got duplicates of a lot of books here. In case he loses them, I guess. I don't know. Um, in here we have the captain's private bedroom. He's got the smallest little one-man bed there. Oh, poor soul. And uh, oh, his bags are left here with a teddy on top, a black teddy on top. That's a bit strange. And uh, what we got in here? His closet for his uniforms. And he has. A shower and a bathroom on suites, um, complete with his own vampire mirror, um, up off his bedroom. I mean, it, Captain is rocking it. He's got it all, but he's lonely. He's only got one bed, single bed in there. So it's a single life for captain of this ship. And here we go onto the bridge. Now, this is where it all happens. This is how you fly the mother. You get into this seat here and suddenly, boom, the pilot sits here. Not the captain, the pilot. The pilot also has two co-pilots as well. Now, the pilot, you might think, is, should be the captain of the ship, but no. The captain's the one barking the orders. He's the one who's telling the pilot, fly me here, fly me there. And the co-pilots, one can take care of navigation, um, and while the other takes care of communication and shields. And this is how you can truly work as a team in this ship. It's great for group adventures. You know, that could take like a week because, of course, if you save on your ship, if you log out on your ship, then you uh, log back in exactly where you left off. So, let's head to the upper bridge now. And that's a cool feature as well, which means it could be months before you even dock at an actual space station. You know, which is pretty cool. And here we have the, f this is the main flight deck. This is where you would have your two, I guess, engineers who would be sat at them chairs. Um, I don't know what they would be doing if the three pilots downstairs are in their chairs. But the captain most likely, or the commander, I guess, is the higher rank for this ship would be here. Um, he would be at the helm here, which actually you can steer it from as well. It's totally flyable from here as well. Um, it's a little bit fink, finicky, finicky though to do it from here, but uh, this is where the commander will sit, or stand rather, and bark his orders to the dogs that he employs. And I think this little feature here is absolutely cool. It's the, you know, Death Star hologram, isn't it, from Star Wars? I mean, this is amazing here. Um, just to stand around here and just to see what's going on outside and, oh my life, this is like Nerd Boy's wet dream. I'm telling you, it's this is part of the real big fun of uh, Star Citizen, I feel. You know, group adventures, and this ship is the perfect one to take off and fly with. And it's bloody massive as well. Right, so uh, let's continue on. So we are on the flight deck here. So if we come out of here, we have six escape pods. Look at that. How cool is that? Now, at the moment, these aren't workable at all, but I'm sure at the final release they will be, which means if you guys are under attack and somebody is about to blow up your ship or even capture it, guys, you can save your lives, okay? Get in the escape pods and it's, you know, down to Tatooine. 
Um, look at this corridor here. This, the lighting on this ship, I gotta say, is absolutely beautiful. The hidden lighting that's like behind panels, but then illuminates just perfectly. The the floor lighting, you know, with all the LEDs built into the floor, uh, it's everything just given a beautiful atmosphere, you know, to this whole ship. And I love the reds and I love the blues. And what room is this? Oh yeah, this is like, I guess, what would be the engineer's room. So evidently this is a 3D printer in here, which um, for whatever reason, I don't know, but uh, it kind of reminds me of one of those old um, like oven microwavable um, devices where you'd, uh, you know, do some experiments and prep things up. but. Now this is like the engineer station, like the head engineer um, who controls the dudes down in the engine room, which we will go visit later. Um, and this would be his main workstation. I don't know why he would want a 3D printer though, but somebody told me this was a 3D printer. But it's not, it's not usable at all, so it's not really clear what it is. It doesn't actually say anything of what it is, but uh, yeah. So that's this room. Um, I don't think this does anything. Nope. Fire extinguisher, man. Gotta have it for safety on board the ship. Now, sometimes these doors can be a little bit glitchy. Literally just gotta step back and let them do their thing. And this room here, now this room is a bit particular because if I take my helmet off in this room, I begin to die. Like, I, I don't know if there's a breach in this room or not, but the oxygen level in this room is non-existent for some reason. Um, it might just be a glitch because this room is unfinished actually. They haven't finished actually even putting things in this room. This little device here, which looks crazy, which looks like something, you know, Iron Man would use, um, is actually a device for creating drones, evidently. Um, either Android or robotic, not really clear, but um, I don't know if this comes down from the ceiling doesn't look like it does but yeah you create drones in here which go off and either fix the ship or or do menial tasks but um, this is the drone operators you know seat so therefore in that there they must be creating drones now this can I believe this can be powered on but that is it um, yeah power on but then I don't think anything else can be done with it, so it's a bit of a burn. But again, this is a completely unfinished room, so it doesn't matter if there's glitches in here or anything. Nobody's actually really going to come in here to do anything because there's nothing practical that works um, at the moment in here, so it's uh, it don't matter. So, moving forward. Now, here we go. Now, this room here is probably one of the coolest features of the ship because... If you've got uh, a spare little spaceship, like say an Aurora or even a Pisces, you could actually get, let's get in here, you could actually park it in this room, right? A spaceship within a spaceship. And now, if you have, say for instance, the Pisces, where you could actually put maybe something even in the back of it, or a, a ship that can hold a rover in the back, that means you've got a rover inside a spaceship, which then goes inside a spaceship. Now, these doors do actually open with using this console in here. I don't know if you can do it from here though, but these do open. Uh, the ceiling will part and a spaceship can come and drop its load in. In fact, let's open up the doors. I don't know if you can do it from within here. I don't think so. Let's see. It doesn't look like it. Um, don't know what that is. That's just like a remnant of a spaceship part that's been left over. Again, this whole thing is, is not complete. So, engineer access only. So, I'm guessing the engineer of the ship will have access to that one. So which ain't me. So uh, unfortunately I can't show you that. But if we run down here real quick, we can uh, activate this here using this little console here. You literally just click it and it opens up. And then once it fully open, you know, you can um, park your ship in there. Now, if you're in space, right, you can walk in the area 
um, uh, within here, within this uh, little, I guess it's a hangar bay, you know, um, you can actually walk in there. If you're in going through light speed and the doors happen to be open, you, I believe, can still go in this here um, and it doesn't actually affect. Now, there is another area of the ship where if you do happen to accidentally venture and you're in, you know, warp speed, as it were, then it will matter, actually, and you will be blasted out of your ship because it happened to me. Uh, there's another one of those gun turret rooms I was telling you about. Um, and I believe is, uh, yes, it's through here. Uh, the EVA room, which is not through here. Hangar bay. Elevator. That's just through there where we came through. Hangar bay must be down the other side, I'm thinking of. What's going on? What's going on, man? Doors are gone. Right, there was a door down here. Last time I was in here. There was a door down here, and it said the word EVA on it. It said the word EVA on it. Uh, it's not here now, for some reason. It's gone. What's going on, man? Not the elevator. I mean, it's definitely not near. Turret. Engineering. Where the hell are we? I don't know. And I'm lost on the ship. <laughs> anyway, don't matter. So that is pretty cool feature there. Right, continuing forward. Coming through here, we have a uh, PT, another PT turret, uh, like I mentioned before. And if we come through here, we can go into now the engineering mechanical engine room. And this is where the engines are now. There is a stair lift that we can actually use to go down to the lower engineering group, which we will use beneath the engines. Now look at this. Does this look like Star Wars or what? I mean, I expect Princess Leia to be slipping a card into R2-D2 in this very corridor. It looks exactly like that, you know? Um, it's, uh, it's very evident... Oh, hello, what's this? It's very evident that the whoever made this ship is a very a big fan of uh, Star Trek and Star Wars. This ship is most most likely trying to represent the Star Trek Enterprise and the fact that you have a ship where you have a captain or a commander who has various members of staff and they can perform their roles. I don't actually know what this is. Um, burn. Let's try that again. No. I guess we never will know. No, they don't want us to know about that. So that's the. This is the engine room. So if we go up these ladders here, we will actually walk between the two engines. And here they are. Here, massive, whatever they're called, engines. I don't know what technology they're using in the future for this thing, but you can hear the static off the engines. Hear that? How cool is that? So, that's for the engineer to worry about. And I'm no engineer. That's another one of the turret rooms that I was talking about. So there's three in total, not two. And here we are back at the top. So, if we go through this door, uh, we just go back in a loop. We need to come through here to the elevator. Got to call the elevator. Man, it's like a department store, this ship. 
we go find uh right where are we man okay so habitation deck yeah that's where we want to go we're at the technical deck oh no we've seen the habitation deck we want to go to the cartography deck my bad up we go man Here we go. So I am unable to recall that information right now. Voice control off. Orion offline. So here we are in the cartography deck. Now I'm not really sure what this room is meant to uh, like do, um, but I'm guessing that there's going to be a person in here who can, I guess, set the route for the for the for the you know I don't know who has access to like all like a map of the star systems or a map of the universe and then can set and plot the course a lot better than somebody who's using their Moby glass I don't know it's not very clear um, I'm not a cartographer so but it, you know it's clearly something to do with mapping um, and it, it goes in a giant ring around the rosies through here the ship is massive it's huge it's crazy um, through here we have um, a room oh it's a corridor with a view ah there we go and through here an escape pod so that means there's eight escape pods on this ship so that's a crew of six and um, a this is the this is the room I was looking for before right so don't ever open this door when you're going through quantum travel because as soon as you do that you're sucked out okay because you're in EVA mode now and we are on a moon so I have to be careful here because um, I'm actually floating you know uh, let's have a look here this is where you actually you know we will if I jump down there it's gonna be a case of actually gonna be using my boosters and it come down gently you know that's basically for EVA maneuvers I don't know if I can get back up there no um, that's for doing EVA maneuvers within uh, within outer space man I can't get back inside me on the ship there we go um, doing yeah doing the maneuvers within space so like for instance if someone's docking their ship and they're having a bit of trouble seeing and uh, somebody can go through and just sort of like you know help them and uh, let's get back up to that deck because I believe there's one more thing to show you Yeah, EVA. So this is an airlocked uh, door, and the reason that is because within this room here, you know, these two doors here for EVA will, uh, you know, watch another spaceship coming in land. You know, so. And then this comes around here, and we have the other room here, I believe. That's oh yeah, escape pod. And there we go, basically. Um, I mean, to be honest, that's basically it of this whole gigantic, you know, ship. Um, this isn't even the biggest ship or the biggest multi-crew ship, but uh, it's absolutely massive, isn't it? Absolutely massive. And for those people who had subscribed to uh, RSI in the month of June, this would have been their ship for the entire month. Free. Absolutely free. Um, I don't know what the ship is next month, but um, I shall do a full walkthrough of that. And here we are back at the garage. So, let's... Uh, Let's disembark. Leg it. This thing comes out quite far. This ramp. 
So you'll have no worries on board if you accidentally find yourself. You know, oh, it's a bit short. It comes out quite long, you know. Uh, let's get some scale here. Let's uh, let's go for a little run, which is very hard to do on the moon. And let's see if we can f get some scale. I guess it is hard to get scale when you've got nothing behind it to uh, warrant it, but I'll tell you what, I'll put me in for scale. So if we face this way, so there we go, basically that is the Carrick. That is the tour of it. Uh, I want to thank you so much for uh, joining me on the tour of the ship and uh, tune in next month for another one of another ship. Uh, take care.
Lights on. Done. Engines off. Off. Engines 